Okay, welcome back. I'm going to do some trigonometry with a non-American type slide rule, a Euro type slide rule. Uh, these are both basic slide rules. Um, here in our Reitz type slide rule, we know the trig is on the back of the slide. Um, so we could use it as I, I did in the other videos by flipping the slide over, then you get S and T. Um, here you can compare them against D, and that's how I did trigonometry in the other videos. Of course, I did it with this advanced slide roll, uh, but you can see this advanced American type slide roll also has the trig on the slide. So you see it has S and T there, just like we would have here, and you can do trigonometry um, with this basic slide roll, essentially as I did it with this more advanced slide roll. Now, question is, what if you have a slide roll of a Euro type? So here is a Aristo Studio slide roll. Uh, you can see the difference here in the trigonometry is that the trigonometry is on the base. So you, here you have S, T, T1, T2, and S um, instead of on the slide, which is a little bit different. Okay, um, luckily that doesn't make too much of a difference, but we're going to go through it. Um, you can find trigonometry on the base like this on Darmstadt style slide rules, which have usually at least S, T, and P, which you can think of as related to trigonometry. Of course, I have a separate video on the P-scale. Um, these all appear on the front of the Darmstadt. Uh, sometimes you also have ST, and sometimes you have two tangent scales instead of one, like you do on this slide rule. Um, these two tangent scales are for ranges up to 45 and then greater than 45, as we discussed um, in other videos. Um, okay, all depends on your slide rule. Uh, so this Aristo Studio is a very, very typical... Um, European slide rule made in Germany. Um, if you think of this as like the quintessential American uh, engineering slide rule, this is probably the quintessential uh, European engineering slide rule. Very common. Um, lots of them are out there. There's different variations on it. Some variations on the, the Aristo Studio have only one tangent scale. Um, if you just want to see the back of the rule here, there are um, two sets of three log log scales and the back of this is essentially kind of a, a Mannheim layout with A, B, C, D. Um, but with the, the log log scale, since you have C here, you can use the log log scales as I did in the other video. Um, here you have the folded scales and those are essentially arranged the same way as they are on the American slide roll. The difference is really in using the trigonometry scales. Okay, now with this type of layout, it's easy to do direct reading, okay? So you would direct read against D, so say you want to compute sine of 35 degrees, S scale is on the bottom, you simply find 35 degrees um, down here, then you read on the D scale about uh, 5.67572, about. Um, you can read in reverse, so let's compute some arctans. So if I find 5.2 on the D scale, then I'm going to read up to tangent 1, T1, or the T scale if you don't have two tangent scales. Um, and here I read about 25, 6, 7, 27 and a half, let's say. Okay, of course that's for uh, tangents between point 0.1 and 1. For tangents between 1 and 10, uh, you should use T2, or if you don't have T2, you're going to have to use an inverted scale, do a cotangent. Um, okay, but we have T2 here, so let's do it that way. So I'll find 3, 5, 3, 6, and then I know I should read this on T2. And on T2, I read 71, 2, 3, 4, 74 and a half degrees. Okay. One nice thing about this layout is it sets you up for multiplication or division fairly simply. See, if I go to the tangent 1 scale and find 10 degrees, then what's reading on the D scale is tangent of 10 degrees. So I could just in turn uh, now multiply that. So let's multiply using the CI scale. So I find 8 on the CI scale, and if I come to the index, that's multiplying that tangent by 8, 
and I see about uh, 1.4 looks like 1.41 Okay. To compute a cosine, of course, you just use the complement of an angle on a lot of slide rules that's marked for you. So I'll use the sine scale, uh, but use the red number here. So finding the red number there for the cosine, you can see this is a self-documenting slide rule, so it reminds you on the right here, if you're using the red number, uh, you're computing a cosine. Okay, so now the cosine of 40 degrees is appearing on the D scale, so I could divide by 2 simply by aligning the 2 on the C scale coming out to the index then D scale should have D scale should have the result and let's see that's about 0 0.35678382 eight, eight, or so and of course that was the number between 0 and 1 then I divided by 2 decimal point will be there okay now, let's solve some triangles. So first thing you could do is the law of sines. Um, if you're totally lost with the law of sines, uh, you should go see my video um, on the S scale, uh, using the S scale efficiently. Uh, that one is featuring uh, this American type slide rule. Okay, but let's assume you know how to do the law of sines. So the nice thing is uh, between the S scale and the C scale, uh, you can set up the law of sines. Now on the American type slide rule, with the trigonometry on the slide, you're using the S scale and the D scale, one on the slide, one on the base. Uh, with the European style slide rule, the main difference here is I'm going to have to use the S scale on the base and the C scale on the slide instead of the D scale on the base here. Okay, so I'm using the S and the, the C scales. Okay, so let's find uh, 25 degrees. Okay, and across from that we know side length 3, so I'll align that sine of 25 degrees with 3 on the C scale, which is highlighted in yellow. Um, then all I need to do is come out to 20 degrees on the S scale, a little bit to the left. And then I look back up at the C scale and I see that's about 2.4, uh, 2.4, let's go with 3. Okay, using the law of signs. Um, commentary on the Aristo Studio. So I mentioned the little uh, variations. You'll see some where the, the accent uh, yellow strip is in a uh, better shape, not as faded as this one. Um, you'll also see ones where the cursor um, has um, adjustments. This is a non-adjustable late type cursor, uh, which I kind of like, although I wish it was I wish it was the two-piece instead of the three-piece cursor, like you have on the uh, the Faber-Castell small slides, uh, slide rules, which are late model. Let's solve some right triangles. Um, we remember using the law of signs for right triangles that the 90-degree um, index mark on the S scale is aligned with a 1, um, and I want to put that in alignment with the hypotenuse. Of course, hy I'm using the C scale now instead of the D scale. The nice thing though is that you might be able to align the 6.1 there with that index without using the cursor. So you see I've put 6.1 right over the 1, um, really putting that over the 90 on the S scale. But one advantage of this layout is you might be able to to do that without using the um, the cursor, but okay. Um, so I put 6.1 over 90, then uh, if I set the cursor to 50 degrees, I read on the C scale about 46.8, uh, let's say, for that side. And then, of course, uh, to find the other side, I need the complementary angle, so I'll use the cosine scale, which is marked with the complementary angle, so finding 50 in red there. And then I see the result here about 3.92 or 39.2. Okay. Let's look at this triangle. Uh, here I don't know the hypotenuse right off, so what I will do is I will find 29 on the S scale. at the bottom, and then align that with 310 on the C scale. 
then, of course, at the index mark here, I should be reading the hypotenuse length, and that's about 6'4", so 6'40". And then, at 29 on the complement scale, the cosine scale, I should be reading the other length. So let's set that, that's down here, um, in a low resolution part here, that's 28, so 29 is right about there. And there on the C scale, I see about 5, 6, so 5, 60. Okay, uh, remember in this layout, what you do is you get at the index, either the right index or the left index, depending, uh, you put your hypotenuse, or you find your hypotenuse, um, and then you need to have at least one other uh, side angle pair. If you have this side and this angle, then of course you find that angle um, on the complement scale uh, in order to set sine of this angle over that one. Okay. So remember, uh, when you're doing the law of sines with the right triangle, at the index over the 90 degrees, you have the hypotenuse length over one of the sides. Uh, you will find that on the C scale over uh, the angle across from it on the S scale. So here, 310. And then you find the other one um, on the complement or the cosine, so over here uh, where I have the cursor. Okay, as a last little bonus, let's solve the following problem um, in a very efficient way. Uh, so this is not maybe the most intuitive way to solve this problem, but it involves only one setting of the slide, so I think it's kind of cool. So what if I want to find the hypotenuse length of this triangle? Okay, the first thing I'll do is solve uh, inverse proportion 5 times tangent theta equals 2. Okay, so what I will do uh, to do an inverse proportion is I will find uh, the 2 on the CI scale. Okay. Okay. So then I have essentially 2 times 1 here. And then 2 times 1 is the same as 3.5 times tangent of something. So let's find 3.5 on the CI. Remember, it's reading backwards, so 3.5 is here. Okay, well, so then what's reading down here is the angle, oh, sorry, not down here, up on the tangent scale, is the angle I'm looking for, uh, angle theta. So angle theta here looks like about 29, uh, 29, a little under 29.8. So let's say 29.7, okay? Now, what I'll do to find H is solve this inverse proportion. Uh, the nice thing is I already have this set up, right? Remember, I have the 2 times 1 set up over here. So what I need to do is change tangent theta to sine theta, so that angle theta, the 29.7, which you're going to have to remember or write down, 29.7 degrees, uh, you should transfer... You should transfer um, to the S scale using the cursor. So here's 29, uh, so let's say 29.7 is about here. Okay. Then, reading on the CI scale, uh, you see the result actually. So it, it remember CI scale is reading backwards, so about 4.03. So there is a very efficient way to find the hypotenuse given the other two sides uh, using this type of trigonometry setup. You can do something similar with, uh, with the American slide rule as long as it has the DI scale, uh, which not all of them do. Okay? Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, good luck with your slide rule.